Welcome to Obsidian TTRPG Tutorials.com. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys, and welcome back tonight to another Obsidian video. Tonight we're going to have a discussion about a pretty popular topic. That topic is character sheets. Almost every second day, I reckon it feels like, probably not that often, but it feels like that, we see a new person come into the Obsidian TTRPG Community Discord channel and say, hey guys, how can I make character sheets? Probably even got to like once a day for a while there and I kept uh, saying the same thing and it's probably not a very popular response that I keep giving, but I believe it to be factual, all right? If you are coming here to make character sheets, you are going down the wrong rabbit hole, okay? Obsidian can do a lot of things. But character sheets is not something that you should aim to make, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to state that. Done. Video over. Have a great day, guys. I will speak to you on the forums. Couldn't really do that, though, could we? We should probably dive a little bit deeper and explain why I think this, right? Basically, character sheets, in my mind, break down into two categories. Okay, there's character sheets that are managed by the player and then there's character sheets that are managed by the DM. And the reason why I say that is because what I see very commonly in our community is people coming along saying, I need to have copies of my player's character sheets so I can look up things. And they go down this rabbit hole of going, I'm going to create character sheets for my players. I'm going to keep track of all their stats. Every time they level up, I'm going to update my sheets. Right, you see where we're going with this? At the end of every session, I'm going to update what items they have. You are literally creating yourself work if you go down this rabbit hole. And work that, in my opinion, all right, I've been DMing now for 15 years, is completely unwarranted. All right, you are taking away from the time that you need to put into your game to make your game better by chasing this magical rainbow of having perfect data. All right. My recommendation, if you are a dungeon master who is seriously thinking about sitting down and keeping track of every single change that happens on your player character sheets, just stop. Step back from that ledge and ask yourself, what information do I actually need as a DM to play the game? Okay, in my opinion, character sheets belong, as they're stated, to the characters. It's their responsibility to update character sheets, okay? It's, that's their part of the game. They can track their health. When they, are, when they level up, they can track the level up. They can track their spell usage. They can track their items. Now, there is obviously always players who you might not be able to trust, okay? If you're playing with those players, I recommend you don't. Just that simple, right? Like, play with people you like playing with. Play, play with people who want to play the game the way it's meant to be played. All right, but if you really want to make character sheets and you really want to have them available, there are some options. All right, so we're going to go through and talk a little bit about my opinion further and show you some of the options that are available so we can, you know, come to a, a uniform decision <laughs> on how Josh should recommend new users go ahead with character sheets in the future. All right, so let's jump in. All right, so let's start by distinguishing whether you're a DM or a player. If you are a player who is using Obsidian for your notes for your session, hats off to you. Fantastic effort. You're probably that note taker that the DM is absolutely fearful of, right? Because you have better notes than anyone else at the table. They're all linked You've got the history there, you've probably got the metadata, keeping track of where you met people, what day you met them, what the weather was on that day. Hats off. I am not speaking to you when I make this video, if I'm honest. When I say don't make character sheets, this isn't about you. All right, so let's have a quick look at how I would make a character sheet if I was a player. Um, now, I'll be completely honest. If I was a player, I'd be using a digital form. All right, I'd be using D&D Beyond or Demiplane personally, um, but a online web-based solution. Um, but not everyone wants to spend the money. All right, so 
if we don't want to spend the money, what options are there? And I think there is an option available in Obsidian that could work really well. All right, that option is Excalibur. Well, if we have a look here, you can see that something's bugging out. Uh, you can see that I have got a character sheet here that I have just designed, all right, whipped up in about 20 minutes, okay? It looks fancy, all right, but ultimately there's not a whole lot going on here, if I'm completely honest. And let's just show you what I'm talking about, all right? I have a, uh, a call-out box, I guess you could say, or a node with my name in it. All I did was drag that node out, pressed enter, typed my character's name. If I can get it right. Right, and then I styled it. I was like, oh, I'm going to make it pink. Okay, no problems. And then I sized it. All right, pretty much 80% of what you're seeing here is as simple as that. It's a node with text in it. All right, this is a node with text in it. This is a node with text in it. This is a node with text in it that's on top of other nodes with text in it. This here, exactly the same. There's no calculations happening on this character sheet. Okay? This character sheet is designed to be used pretty much in the same way you would a pen and paper uh, character sheet at the table. Okay? You'd be manually updating these things when they change. All right? You'd be rolling your dice, you'd be upgrading your stats, and you'd be keeping track of it. Now I have made a few exceptions here, just for the sake of getting things pretty, all right? I have dragged in some beer for no other reason other than it looks good. I've got some maps, I've got some coins. They don't achieve anything whatsoever. I have, however, got a potion of healing, and you can see if I click on that, I've actually got a link to a potion of healing. Okay, so you can actually, when you put these things in, you can actually create links. Um, if I link that to my spell book, all right, see how that's now got a link? You can see that node there. All right, it's now got a link to the spell book. All right, and I can click that link, and it should open up. Should. All right. Always when I'm making videos, I manage to do something that doesn't work. What about this? There we go. I just missed the, the square brackets, square brackets. All right, so you can see here that I've got a link to a spell book and I can link to it. I've managed to do something very wacky here. All right, anyway, you can do that. And you can obviously have some pictures with some links. Something else that I've done though, if you come in here, you'll see that I've got some check boxes. All right, and you've got a little bit of something, something going on here now. What I've done is I've made a couple of notes that I'm embedding, all right? So if we have a look at the spell book note, you can see I've got a very simple note. It's got a heading for cantrips, and I'll put this into source mode so you can see it. So the one hash space cantrips, this is a heading, and then I've just got a link to my spells. All right, I've got all the spells in my vault. Um, created using the uh, CLI tool um, so I can link to them nice and easily. If I add a different spell like uh, flame something, um, fire something, fireball, there we go, I can add a fireball, right? I can add spells very easily by modifying this note. And then all I've done, if we click back to the character sheet, pretty sure I just dragged it in. No, I didn't. Hang on. We're going to go right click, insert any file. I'm going to go to Spellbook. I'm putting the wrong Spellbook in here. I'm going to put it in as an embeddable. All right, there we go. So I can basically embed notes inside of Excalibur. All right, so just run through that again. I'm just right clicking, insert any file, selecting that file, and then putting it in there. And you're probably like, oh, but yours looks cool. You've got this really cool background. Well, I don't, guys. I've actually just got a picture of a background. All right, and in this case here, I've actually locked it. All right, so that it doesn't move. So I can right click any image and go lock. So you can just go to Google and search for parchment background 
you know, template or something like that. And all I've done is just dragged that over the top so that it looks good. That's it. Now, as you can see, you can click on that. All right, so you click twice into the note and then you can click your spells and have them open up. Uh, over here for an inventory, I did exactly the same thing. That's quite literally just a note with a list of things that can be done. Um, and I think this one here, what was it? The, is that a note? What did I do there? Oh, that's right. These, oh, these look fancy, don't they? Zoom in so you can see them. Lovely checkboxes. All right, you can click these all you like. They will not work. I have used Windows period key to bring up the um, emoji button. All right, and I've just put little pictures of emojis in here. All right, because these actions, uh, these abilities, they're not something that you level up very often, right? So, you know, it's quite easy for me to to do that. Um, I could go and have another sheet with actual checkboxes. Um, so I'd have to click in it and then click. That is a possibility. I just like the way this looks, if I'm completely honest. All right, then over here I've got some books and a feather because who doesn't need a book and a feather, right? Like, it just, let's be honest, this is for screenshots. This is for screenshots. That's about all it's for. And then I've got some notes. I can drag in images. I can make some notes. All right. If I was a player wanting to keep track of my character sheet, I think this would be a perfect way to do it. All right, now the reason for that is it's very easy to lay your information out. You can drag this around however you like. You can keep track of whatever you like. You can then link to pretty much whatever you like. Um, I wonder if I, oh, this works. There we go. It actually links to short sword, right? So there are ways and means inside of Excalibur to link the things. And um, you might be asking yourself, could I use Canvas to do something similar? I'm sure absolutely yes, you could. Um, but I found that Excalibur works faster. All right, it's more uh, efficient at what it does. Um, but also at the same time, uh, it gives you more freedom, right? To do things like just drag in pictures and have them however you like. And I really appreciate the, uh, the fact that that tool lets me do that. So anyway, if I was a character playing in a game and I wanted to use Obsidian, this is what I would do. It's simple, it's easy, it's quick to update. I can modify it on the fly if I want. Like if I just want to write a quick note, I can throw that in here and I can come back, polish it, make it as look as good as I like after the fact as well. So that's certainly a very good option, I think. All right, and then for the Dungeon Masters, you're probably sitting at your screen going, what about me? Um, and you know what? It isn't fair. Um, <laughs> sorry, you probably have to be Australian to get that. Um, basically, I really, I just don't see why people are so desperate to go down this rabbit hole. And I'm going to show you something here that one of our uh, community members, Dave, has made. Um, but I just want to, before I show you this, I want to, I want to say this. this. This thing is cool. This thing is very, very cool. It looks amazing. And you can make amazing things in this tool. But if you're a new user to Obsidian or... You don't know what a variable is, all right? You've never touched any sort of coding in your life. You don't know what a query is. You might even struggle with opening a zip file, right? If any of these things sound confusing to you, my recommendation is you ignore me now, all right? Because while, yes, you can make incredible things in Obsidian, all right, I would say only 3 to 4% of the community are actually doing it. And the people that are making the really cool stuff, they're coders for a living, guys. Like, I'm not a coder for a living. Uh, I do a little bit of coding for a living. Very, very little. I'm a community coder. All right? But these guys, they do it for a job. Well, they're like engineers, right? Like, they know what they're talking about. They, they breathe this sort of stuff in their sleep. But let's have a look at Flint. So I really like. This is a really cool note. All right, this is Dave's um, character sheet. Um, he spent a lot of time massaging this thing. And I am not going to do it justice because I basically got tired of trying to fix all the things that were broken with it and went to bed, if I'm completely honest. 
So you see there's like links. There's, there's links that don't work because I don't have those things in my vault. Um, but ultimately what's going on here is a whole lot of the, uh, the ITS theme info boxes by the looks of it. He's got a cool status thing up here that lets you select an emoji and show it. Whoa, there's a lot of properties, right? A lot of properties, an overwhelming amount of properties, if I'm honest. And you would really want to have something that hides this for you, in my opinion. Um, but he, as you come down, right, you can see there's a picture of Flint. You can see what his passive skills are. He's got his racial traits. He's linking to all of those things. So he'll have notes in his vault that match all of these names that have links to all of the descriptions of this thing. All right, so not too different from what I was doing in Excalibur when you think about it that way. A lot of this is just tables linking to notes and that makes it nice and easy. Um, but he's got ability scores in here. He's got the ability to um, tick different boxes and you can see the value is increasing. Um, you've got all of that going on. So that is lovely. Uh, the fact that he's managed to achieve that um, is quite impressive. Um, the AC here, the buttons of up and down are really cool. Um, I think that's a great idea. You've got your HP, you've got your initiative. Oh, oh, I can't click that one, can I? No, I can't click that one, that's an output. Um, you've got your spell modifier, right? He's got drop downs, he's got some personal details to say if he's a dead or alive. Whoa, I think I just broke it. All right, we've got background links. We've got male or we've got female. It really doesn't like when I change some of these options. All right, then we've got combat actions. And again, this is just a table really with notes. Um, I don't have the dice roller plugin enabled because I don't use it, but if you did, this would all be functioning. Um, and then down here, we've got spell trackers. Oh my God, this is really having a thing. Some of you will sometimes hear me think, or hear me say, sorry, that Obsidian is better working um, vertically versus left to right, right? Up to down versus left to right. This is, when I say that, what I'm talking about is, um, there's a lot going on here, right? With, he's tried to go left to right. So column one, column two, column three, column four. And you see my screens cutting in and out occasionally and jumping around a little bit. Um, that is actually a, it's a known weakness with um, the platform that Obsidian is built on. All right. Um, it's a known issue. So if you have something that's like too, too long up and down your screen, it will flick around sometimes. And as you can see, I found as well with like different columns, it can really mess things up as well. It's like jumping up and down. All right, anyway, let's keep going. We've got spells. I'm just gonna try and stay here. We've got spells, like how many have you got left per day? I think that's pretty clever. Uh, links, obviously, to the spells. Uh, you can see which ones are prepared by which ones have ticks in them. All right, so I think that's really cool. He's gone and put the R's in there, All right? So a lot of this has been designed already by the player, all right? If we come down here, I haven't got this functional. And Dave, sorry, I didn't do this justice. I just, it was a lot of work to get it working. I got one working. Um, but he got basically this thing where you can type in um, your note names and, and bring it up. No, mine's really not working. Um, my notes were not compatible with this system. All right, my notes don't have a value or a weight in them. Um, and because of that, um, none of this system was working. This is an incredibly hard-coded system. All right. Now let's just jump in and have a look at this note in reading view. Proper reading view. Where is it? Source note. All right. And this is why I said at the start, like, you know, if you're a dungeon master and you've come along to the community and you've seen posts like Dave where he's showing these amazing things... If you read this and you don't know what you're looking at, just turn around, guys. You don't need it. Go find another way. <laughs> All right? This is advanced stuff. This is like deep end of the rabbit hole pool. Like, this is the level where Dave's working with lemons and begging lemons on a regular basis to add new features and functionality to MetaBind so that he can do new things. Okay? Like, 
This is two developers even working together, not using the functionality that's even available now sometimes, but creating new functionality in order to push this tool further and further and further. Um, and you can see like, you know, for those of us amongst us who know what, what this is, you know, we're just pulling in properties in a lot of places, but you know, here we've got some joins going on. We've got import options from Metabind. Uh, what have we got? Where's some fancy stuff? Looks like we've got some different queries here, questioning the outcomes and putting in different results. All right, now, I don't know about you, but reading this makes my head hurt. Okay, this is, this is a lot. And I'm not making this video for the Daves and the Lemons of the world. Right, the people who are coders who are experienced who know what they're doing. I'm making this video for the 95% of you who don't know what this is, but you want it, right? You've seen it, you've got to have it, you must have this shiny toy. I'm here to say, guys, I don't think you need that shiny toy. All right, yes, you can do this stuff, but do you really, really need it? All right, because when I'm playing a game, at the table as a dungeon master, some of the things I commonly need might be simply what their AC is, okay? Or their passive perception, all right? If someone's yelling out, oh, I'm gonna cast this spell, all right, and, uh, oh, how does this work? We hand the player a book. He looks the spell up in the player handbook, all right? Or it might be another player who's already looking at the book, looking up how that spell works. So I, as a dungeon master, don't necessarily need access to absolutely everything, all right? But doesn't mean I don't use it, right? I usually have a scratch note up and someone's cast Fireball and I want to know how it works. I type Fireball and all of a sudden I have a link to a Fireball and I can read the spell, all right? For the very few situations that occur at my table where I need to look something up, Obsidian is there for me, all right? And whatever note I have open, I can type in the thing that I want usually to bring that thing up and find out how that thing works and help the players move through that challenge, right? Because that's what it is. It's a challenge. It's, it's a roadblock to you playing your game and moving more efficiently through to the next challenge, for example, or the next account or whatever it is you're doing, all right? You've got a rules that's popped up. And if you don't have a rules lawyer, you've got to stop. You've got to look that rule up. Obsidian's fantastic for having that. But if you go down the, the, the path of trying to maintain one of these for every one of your players, well, you might as well take on a second job, all right? Because character sheets always change, all right? It's the nature of a character sheet. Um, and it's my very strong and outlandish opinion that the player should be updating this, not you. So anyway, um, that is one option all right so that's dave's character sheets he's got these available in the uh the discord if anyone wants to play with them um he does um say that they come as they are like you need to come through and massage these to work with your own notes all right he's absolutely correct you can see that i loaded this thing up and it did not work for my notes it takes a lot of massaging to get there um and personally i just got to the point where i was like you know what i've got enough for this video I don't need to go the next level. <laughs> All right. But the point is we're showing you what is available. But now let's jump in. Let's have a look and I'll show you what it is that I do recommend. Okay. So you're a dungeon master. You do want to keep track of your players' character sheets, but you want to do it without effort. What do I recommend? Well, look, Demiplane, uh, Hero Lab Online, sort of, um, or D&D Beyond. Right now, I'm only touching a handful of games here. I'm well aware of that, all right? Not every game has these available, all right? But we can talk through that in a minute. Um, 5e is obviously one of the most popular systems in the world, all right? And this is just a D&D Beyond character sheet. You can see I've got the website effectively inside of my notes, all right? I've done that using the custom frames plugin, all right? And that applies to all of these. So here's the, uh, the Hero Lab Online. Show settings, I've got a name for it, and then I've got a link that I get from my character sheet, all right, just the URL that I use to access it. Might be the share link, all right, D&D Beyond has those, so you can just use those. And then in the actual note itself, if we come to reading, or oh, source mode, sorry, I've just got this little bit of code, all right. What that says is use the custom frames plugin, bring me in the frame that I've configured called D&D B Scott, 
I want that to be the height of 1000 pixels and you can obviously read the readme of the custom frames plugin to see exactly how this works but as you can see that gives you your character sheet inside of the tool I do use this so are we playing 5e currently I wish we were we're moving to pf2e um, but this is what we're currently using all right we use this it's a fantastic tool now you obviously like it's a paid tool you pay for your content that you're using D&D Beyond um, you can also have a subscription uh, it's completely optional um, it just allows you to have more characters right um, and share your content with your players I think that's a big one um, but ultimately it's very easy to create character sheets in this tool if you're playing 5e this is a fantastic option uh, most people have used D&D Beyond already for a while all right and it gives you access to those notes very, very quickly, very, very efficiently, and it updates in real time, right? If I move this note and come back, it will bring down the version that's currently synced to that tool. All right, so if your players are using it constantly, you don't have to update anything, all right? They just maintain and manage their system. And I think that right there is worth the cost of actually purchasing your content on a tool like this. If I'm completely honest, time is money and I would prefer to spend 20, 30 bucks for a book, all right? Probably like, you know, play a handbook will get you most options these days um, to get me the content that I need to make my character so that I don't have to worry about this, all right? And then it's just, you know, I get access to it. Now, how do I use this as a dungeon master? All right, I have uh, my party folder, Deadly beer, dead thin, and I have one note per player. All right. Now I manage combat with the initiative tracker plugin, and the initiative tracker plugin needs some information per player. That information is what level they are, the modifier, the AC, the HP, and I think the name is in there as well, um, which is feeding from the note name. Um, but I have a note. All right. I name that note after the player. I have these properties inside of there, so level, modifier, AC, HP. All right, and that feeds the initiative tracker plugin and says, this is what the stats are for this player. When these stats change, use the latest stats from this note. So all I do is at the start of every session is I quickly come in here, open up every note for every player and I go, all right, let's just check, is your level different? All right, no, yes, maybe it is, maybe it's not. This character's never even been played if I'm completely honest. Um, I check the modifier, I check the AC, I check the HP, and I just make quick updates to those properties based on what I see here. And I just repeat that process down the list of my players who are actively in that game that night. That way, when the players sit down and they, they play combat, right, the initiative tracker is updated as a result. I don't need to chase my players and say, hey, what's your HP tonight? Like, you leveled up last session, it's changed, what is it? I don't need to do that. All right. I also don't need to keep a, a complete separate copy of everything really, like that's four numbers that I need. It's very, very easy for me to obtain. It leaves the players responsible for this character sheet. All right, I think that's a fantastic outcome. Now, D&D Beyond only supports fifth edition, of course, that's their thing. Um, if you're playing Pathfinder second edition, my recommendation is Demiplane. I know a lot of um, Pathfinder people will be screaming at me saying, oh, you should recommend Pathbuilder. Pathbuilder doesn't actually work for this process, okay? Pathbuilder is not a truly online form, all right? It's not an online character sheet. It saves copies of your character sheet in a JSON format to a Google Drive folder, effectively. And when you save another copy of that, sometimes it creates another copy, like a completely unique copy of that JSON file, right? So the, what that means is that when you hook in to a JSON file or whatever it is that you use, um, the digital character sheet number through that tool, you can come in session one and you can access the character sheet. But then you go away and make changes to that character sheet, the URL changes, and therefore you don't actually get the most up-to-date character sheet when using Path Builder. All right? That's why I say it doesn't work All right, for the way that I am using it. It is a fantastic tool. It's a fantastic free community-made tool. All right? but it doesn't have an always online function and so therefore it doesn't meet my requirements personally because obviously I like to do this. And just to show you how that works, if we come in here, it loads my character. Now, Demiplane is still technically in its first year, all right, so it's running a little bit slowly. 
but the only real other option that I'm aware of that works really well is Hero Lab Online. Um, personally, I, I don't recommend Hero Lab Online. All right? they, uh, they've got some problems, in my opinion, with their support and the way, you know, way they've handled some of their historic issues um, with some of their other products. And anyone who's followed me for a while will know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's not a product I tend to try and rely on these days. I'm trying to move myself away. Um, that's why I'm heading towards Demiplane, even though it's in early access. You can see it looks pretty though. Um, you've got access to all the things. It's quick and speedy once you're actually in here. All right, you can click all the things, it opens up. All right, works really, really nicely. Um, it's not 100% complete, right? Demiplane's got some things that haven't been added yet and it's always a work in progress, but it does provide support for a large number of games. And you can see here that list of games is growing. I just saw a uh, preview this morning of the Alien RPG character sheet. And oh, 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 that looks lovely. Can I just say, if Adam ever watches this, the, uh, the face hugger jumping out of the egg and taking over the demi plane sign, like that's cool. Well done. I liked it. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this is an option. Um, demi plane obviously do other games as well. So Vampire the Masquerade, as an example, is a character sheet that I've made. Uh, I don't play Vampire, not yet anyway, um, but I do like the way the character sheet looks. I was just playing around with it. Du, du, du. There we go. Alright, so you can see, can you click things? I don't even know how to play this game. Bloodbath, what's that do? Oh, we're rolling dice. So yeah, I, I don't know how to play this game, but you know, it works, it comes into your notes, right? And that's the point. Um, there's all those other games there. Now, I did say, obviously I don't recommend Hero Lab Online. Um, it's personal opinion at this point. Um, but yeah, burn once, blame me, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but you can see the character sheets do load. They do load quicker than Demiplane currently, all right? Um, it's, a, it's a very different look and feel, all right? They use a lot of sort of boxes uh, with this three pane system. Um, but it works very well and you can obviously see that it comes straight into your notes and it's the same thing It's an always online solution. So therefore that works All right now Hero Lab online also supports other game systems All right, so if you are playing one of these game systems, then they're an option um, Between Demiplane and Hero Lab online and D&D Beyond it covers a large chunk of the most popular popular games All right, so I think for most people there's an option but what if these aren't available? What can you do? All right, so at this point, you're probably sitting there and going, all right, well, my system isn't supported by any of these cool, fancy new toys. Um, and I don't want to pay for it anyway. So I'm just going to ignore your advice and go and make it in Obsidian because Obsidian's obviously, obviously the right tool for this. It can do it, right? Um, no, I still believe that it's the wrong tool for the job. All right. Now in this case here, I'm just going to quick Google for Worlds Without Numbers character sheet, all right, as a Google sheet, all right, because Google is this online Excel spreadsheet, and spreadsheets are much better at doing lots of calculations, and sure enough, there's a thing here from Farley, two years ago, there's a link to a, a character sheet, all right, I could take a copy of this, I think there is a, a way to do that. Last I checked, it's been a long time since I've had to use this. Make a copy. All right, so. I'll make a copy. So now this is copied onto my Google Drive. All right, I've got access to this. I will now grab the link, copy the link, and I'll go back to Obsidian Let's make a new note for worlds without numbers. I have no idea how to play this game. Um, we're gonna create a new custom frame. Click add. We've got the show frame here. Numbers, and then we're gonna put the URL in. All right, we're gonna close that. And then all I'm gonna do is just go to a, another note that has the syntax and copy that in. All right, give it a couple of seconds to load. And there we go. Now we have a character sheet. Now, 
for anyone who's played with Google Sheets before, you'd know that you can actually do collab editing on these things, right? You can have multiple people in here working on the same spreadsheet. So effectively what that means is you could have your players using one of these Google Sheets as a character sheet, right? Filling in that information, all right? Doing their game just like they do normally. And then you just bring a copy in that way at the end of the game. Now, let's just talk around another reason why this is a big thing, right? Because while we can make call notes, all right, we have to consider the fact that Obsidian is largely local first, right? It's designed for you as the dungeon master to have access to your notes. And if you're the dungeon master going down the path of, I want to make all of these cool things for uh, my players, I want to host this for them so they can access it, you're going to quickly find there's another problem. Like, how do you publish this, right? Um, I think Metabind does have some, some published support, but it's, it's not extensive to my knowledge. Um, you've probably got a hell of a lot going on here and chances are it's not going to publish correctly. It's actually, let's have a look. Let's just see. I reckon this is going to completely bug out, but we're going to try and publish this just to see what happens. I don't know if I've actually done a video on publishing yet. All right, let's just have a look at this. I can publish character sheets with Excalibur, by the way. I figured out a way. There will be a video on that coming. Uh, we're going to go new note. We are going to go scratch notes, character sheet designs, and Dave's meta bind. Let's just publish this and let's just see what happens. There's Flint. All right. This is what I mean when you're gonna have problems. All right, because it's it's basically it's publishing the text that's in the note, and the text that's in the note is what you see here. All right, because you need the plugin actively running in the background to convert this. So even if you were to go down this deep rabbit hole of making this cool, amazing stuff, how are you going to share it with your players? Okay, how are you going to give them something that they can use to manage their game, but also update? So therefore, are they going to be keeping another copy on something else and then you're going to be updating after the session or the fact like it's just for me it's a workflow issue it just it just doesn't make sense um so that's something to think about obviously you could use this sheet as yourself right if you're a technical person and you want to have a character sheet inside of obsidian you could go down a path like this and keep track of your stuff um it's certainly an option but you know you just have to remember that this is fairly fairly advanced right when you're editing this thing what are you doing you're coming in here you're making some changes sometimes for the most part it's designed so you don't have to but where's the class features do i need to drag that in from somewhere let's do a search for feature Ah, they're up here. Okay, so you add them. That's pretty clever. Well done, Dave. You, you add your features into your properties and it's maintained and managed through your properties. So you probably shouldn't actually need to go into the background of this. But again, like the amount of thought that's gone into creating this thing so that it works this way is something that 3% of the community I've seen probably do so far. It's not, not normal. Um, all right, so that is obviously something to think about. Um, it is possible to publish your uh, Excalibur stuff. So if you wanted to publish your character note, that is possible as well. That's going to have to be a whole different video though, guys, because that's that's next level. Um, but yeah, well, there's just some rambling thoughts about character sheets in Obsidian. All right, I hate to say it, but obviously, like you know, my opinion's quite clear. Use the right tool for the job, right? And character sheets are not the right tool for the job, okay? I was listening to the, um, the Demiplane stream this morning um, with Bad Eye, 
Um, and he said, you know, like one of the things that people don't understand is character sheets are actually really complex. And I've been following the, the progress of the creation of this, right? Dave jumps into the, the chat all the time and we're talking through the issues and walking through it. And, you know, there are some things that have made him frustrated because he keeps coming across new challenges, right? That he might not have an automatic way to solve and he has to go out of his way to figure that out. It just sounds to me like a challenging way to do things, especially when you could just do something like this, right? Which is just text dragged around the screen. If I take a hit, I can just modify it, right? It's just like playing pen and paper almost, like you're, you're, you're making the changes on the sheet, you're scratching it out, you're rewriting it. You are doing the maths yourself though. All right, but for a lot of people, that's part of the charm. They enjoy that part of the game. So anyway, that's my thoughts. I'll leave you to have a think about what it is that, you know, what my opinion is. Obviously, you're going to have opinion. Um, I fully expect people to go out of their way to keep trying to make character sheets. All right. But I guess what I'm here to do is to make sure that those new players who are coming into Obsidian for the first time, who have seen fantastic screenshots just so you know, this is a deep rabbit hole, all right? And the first thing you should do when you see that rabbit hole is step back and really consider whether or not you want to go down it. That's my advice for tonight. All right, guys, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do, please do like and subscribe using the buttons below. Uh, it's really fantastic to see how many people are watching my videos and finding them useful. Um, a huge shout out to all of my patrons and massive thank you for your support. Um, if you're not a Patreon subscriber now and you'd like to be, you do get access to my Patreon vault, which is like a foundation vault that you can use to get started on your journey. It doesn't have character sheets in it. <laughs> All right. I might create a copy of this character sheet and put it in there. All right. So that people can see how cool this is. Actually, no, I've used purchased art. I can't do that. Damn it. All right. All these things you've got to consider about when you're publishing your material. Um, all right, outside of that, guys, I wish you well, and I will catch you all on the forums and the socials. Have a great night. Enjoy.